Hi, Vinas. Uh, hope you're doing good and great. Uh, so let's solve a few questions. Uh, most of them, uh, which I'm going to discuss now, were posted as a doubt to me, and few of them are case-based questions. So question number one, during root canal instrumentation, the apex constructor is violated and enlarged to a size of 50. So keyword here, you have to make a notice 50, size 50. So basically they thought of preparing up to 50, but they have violated the principle. So means here they have given information that MPA, that is master apical file, MAF is 50, but they have violated it. Means now the preparation is more than 50. So just imagine the preparation is more than 50 size file. That is nothing but more than 0 0.50 millimeters in diameter. So you need to select an option which is more than 0 0.5 millimeters. So what the question is, which of the following is appropriate treatment for this canal? Obturate with gutta pacha and surgically remove the uh, extruded excess gutta pacha. No, that is not required. Okay. So they are simply telling that go for a surgical endodontics. Surgical endodontics is not advised. Always go for a non-surgical endodontics that is nothing but called as a root canal therapy or even if mishap happens it's better to go for a re-root canal rather than going for a surgical procedure so option a you can eliminate it coming to option b uh, fit a number 50 cone with a sailor and careful condensation now the preparation is above 50 you cannot use 50 file because if you use 50 file definitely there will be extrusion of the uh, cone as well as the sailor into the periapical area which is not to be done. Next option C, 50 cone, uh, fit a 50 cone with a sailor, but don't condense uh, as to keep the gatapacha uh, being pushed in the apical foramen. They're telling like, I'm just uh, told you the consequence of option B. Uh, they have extended it. Even if you condense it, even if you don't condense it, when you are using 50 cone, okay, you need to seal with a 50, 50 sailor, 50 cone should be used whenever you're preparing because Epical tuck back is very, very important. That uh, 3 to 5 millimeters of epical tuck back, like whenever you uh, try to pull the master cone, there will be someone, uh, there is something like inside holding it. That tuck back is very, very important. Whenever you don't maintain the tuck back, there is no epical seal and there is high chance that the root canal therapy is going to fade. So option C is also not appropriate. But if you see option D, he is telling reinstrument 1 millimeter short of apex to a size 60 or a larger so they're telling to go for a larger indirectly they're telling to go for a larger size for example if you calculate this considering as a uh, two percentage of ios okay so what is going to be the calculation they're telling one millimeter short of epical foramen okay so this is going to be perfect option when compared to other and the answer for this question is Okay, so we'll go with the second question. The second question is on COVID-19 question, a regular more of a common sense question. A woman whose sister has tested COVID positive came to the clinic with a negative antigen report. Okay, so rapid antigen test is regularly done in the most of the clinics. Okay, because RT-PCR will take time. Like even if you consider my clinic, okay, so we'll advise the patient either to uh, either to get the RT-PCR report, okay, uh, which was recent, like maybe like two or three days before, or either we'll ask the patient uh, to undergo rapid antigen test. And if you talk about the sensitivity and specificity, rapid antigen test is not 100% uh, right in all the scenarios, okay. So keeping that in mind, but with other add-on features, other add-on findings from the patient, the symptoms and signs, we can think whether the patient has to go for RT-PCR. Is it mandatory to go for RT-PCR or not? So keeping this in mind, comes to your clinic with a negative antigen, rapid antigen report or uh, upon which you have done rapid antigen test, which was sound to be negative. Uh, uh, and she was asymptomatic as of now, what to be done next? So check the option. Test again with rapid antigen uh, after seven days. No, meaningless that is. Okay, meaningless to do the rapid antigen frequently. Test again with the RT-PCR after seven days. Yes, you can think of, you can think of testing with RT-PCR after seven days. 
test immediately with rt pcr no it is already done and the patient is asymptomatic so there is no pointless of uh, being testing the patient again and again test again with rt pcr only if the symptoms are developed okay so so compared to option b option d stands better okay so d is a uh, better option for this compared to that of the b because the patient now is having symptoms previously the patient is asymptomatic fine now is having symptoms so as you already done uh, the rapid antigen test now just go for rt pcr okay right so the answer is d for this particular question jumping into the question number three uh, of course we have discussed this question in a different format before uh, i mean a few days back uh, on the group so just just we'll try to read the key points in the question because this question has to be finished as fast as possible a 25 year old male who has worked as a truck driver so most of the truck driver based questions definitely they will have a uh, sexual contact unprotected sexual contact will be there presented with a presented to the clinic with a genital ulcer which is painless uh, do make a note it's a painless ulcer 10 days back and has an unprotected sexual contact with a commercial sex worker three weeks back on examination the ulcer was found to be injurated partially healed and punched out okay we got the clue here the punched out ulcer is syphilis ulcer okay blindly you can go for option c because ulcer in the tuberculosis tuberculosis is not mostly sexually transmitted but uh, ulcer the type of ulcer we see in tuberculosis is is undermined okay undermined you see undermined undermined ulcer uh, you see in uh, tuberculosis okay whereas you see sloping type of ulcer you see in the case of uh, healing ulcer okay right so i mean like if you talk about ulcers okay all these are ulcers ulcer ulcer uh, associated lesions and you see inguinal lymph nodes are enlarged diagnosed serum with vdrl so there are many clues here vdrl uh, is a very beautiful clue that you can conclude it as a syphilis one second thing you have a clue of punched out syphilis okay you have a painless ulcer syphilis right so there are many clues who are concluding it as a syphilis so it's a syphilis and we have already discussed recently the VDRL test is perfectly positive in the case of secondary syphilis when compared to any stage of syphilis. Okay, any stage of syphilis, uh, the sensitivity and specificity of VDRL test is going to be 100 percent in the case of secondary syphilis, secondary stage of syphilis. Okay, so we'll jumping into the question number, next question. Uh, next question is again uh, a case based lengthy question you can check it out they have given a radiograph chest radiograph was given and we'll we'll try to solve it a 50 year old patient present with a low grade fever with evening rays of temperature okay so whenever you see like a, a evening rays of temperature like uh, rays of temperature you can think of malaria apart from the diagnosis you can think of malaria uh, okay right so then you see a productive cough for two to three months so when you see cough nowadays you, you will definitely think of covid 19 but it's a cough of two to three months covid 19 cough is an acute cough most of the viral related signs and symptoms are acute but most of the bacterial things can be both acute as well as chronic but here you you can remove that option of viral infection because it's a cough which is going two to three months ahead okay he approached a local clinic for advice since he has started coughing blood blood tinges are also there from the cough from the past three to four days with a history of loss of appetite and weight loss loss of appetite weight loss uh, uh, of 10 kgs are most common in the case of hiv okay age related aspects okay but now the combination is of a different thing for example you see upon chest radiograph there is a nodular infiltration on the apical part of right lobe that clearly sees on the radiograph and the patient is positive to acid fast bacilli so you have a beautiful clue acid fast bacilli so among the options you have two acid fast bacilli one is leprosy and one is tb okay so uh, option b and option d are simply eliminated and then if you jump into the other contents cough weight loss okay and com coming to that of the uh, radiographic features on the chest x-ray so clearly concludes it is a tb not a leprosy the answer is c for this question when you're talking about acid fast bacilli, sometimes the papacetum maybe uh, have more concern towards you and they may give you an add-on things. Okay, for example, they may give you 
20 percentage of H2SO4 is used in acid basal lye, then your answer is simply tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is very specific using 20 percentage of sulfuric acid. Whereas when I'm talking about leprosy, it is just 5 percentage, 5 percentage only. Sometimes I give a clue 20 percentage or 5 percentage. Whenever they give 20 percentage, you can blindly stick onto the option TB. Or whenever they give 5 percentage, you can blindly stick onto the option leprosy. Okay, so leprosy, they'll have a different uh, background history, which is nowhere related to the tuberculosis, but both are acid fast basal lead. Okay, so I hope you're clear with this question. The answer is tuberculosis for this particular question. So jumping into the next question. So this is already discussed when I'm taking the oral surgery classes in a different format, but uh, do make a note. Okay, so a 28 year old professional rugby player who is playing second row forward presented with an acute articular hematoma. He has been aspirated by the club doctor, but have, however, quick reaccumulated means recurrence is there. On examination, the hematoma affects the central part of pinna and was causing approximately 75% occlusion of external auditory meatus. The patient main concern was potential defect that could cause the hearing loss as well as the cosmetics also okay now uh, cosmetics as well as the uh, like long term effect as well as the uh, look effect look means the cosmetics like how he appeared to look which of the following complication may occur which may affect his cosmetic appearance uh, around the crowd around the people around it okay so if we jump into this this is basically a perfect case of boxer's ear but now here uh, it was given as a rugby player okay so rugby player also may have uh, the similar sort of punched over traumas or over the face or over the ears okay because of uh, uh, i mean like because of this particular type of uh, sport which is more of an a like a violence violence related sport okay so so this is basically called as cauliflower like ear okay so the ear looks like the ear looks like a cauliflower okay and it's also called as boxer's ear what happens here in this particular question is uh, uh, i mean uh, it's it, they have given it as a rugby player okay so that is uh, that is like a uh, it would be so better if, if the question was framed around the boxer around the boxer because it is most often called as a boxer's ear or cauliflower ear okay so but the theology is almost the same it is most often related to the violence associated sport okay the answer is c for this particular question and uh, i'm done for now okay so do like subscribe and we'll be coming out uh, with few more rapid revision as well as few more uh, case-based question sort of videos uh, and I'll try to solve them from my point of view, solving uh, a case-based question, particularly a new case-based question. The approach of solving will be different for different persons. Okay, so most of them I'll I'll try to solve from my point of view, but make sure you need to practice this, and this is a peak time that you need to uh, you need to like you need to understand the keywords. Uh, I mean, there will be one or two keywords in the question uh, which are going to simply conclude you to the right answer and guys do make a note uh, this questions has to be solved as fast as possible in the examination hall because these are going to eat away your time stay positive god bless you love you all and uh, we'll be back with one more video very very soon bye take care signing off dr shlipan from team mds Conference. bye bye